hello, David Harper here of the Bionic Turtle. Welcome to a brief tutorial on what is value at risk. I get this question a lot as I teach the FRM curriculum. Value at risk is very much at the heart of the FRM curriculum, despite all of its shortcomings, which lately have been well publicized. What I'd like to do today is just introduce you to a very basic flavor of value at risk. And let me first say that there's three broad approaches to value at risk. We're not covering two of them. We're not doing historical VAR and we're not doing Monte Carlo VAR. What we're going to do is a very basic flavor, a parametric VAR called Delta Normal VAR. It goes by a couple different names. What I'm going to do is base this on the numbers that I've been working on for the last two days. Two days ago I did a brief tutorial explaining how to calculate the periodic rate of return. And so I'm going to continue to use Google's data. I pulled Google's stock prices for last week, that's five days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And two days ago I showed you how to calculate the periodic rate of return, daily rate of return. And, and you'll might recall if you viewed that that we're using a continuously compounded return. So we're take, using a natural log there because of its elegant features. And I'll remind you, it's time consistent. That's why we like the continuously compounded return. OK, and then yesterday I showed in about 10 minutes how to use those periodic returns to calculate daily volatility. And I discovered that for that five days period, Google's daily volatility was about 1.1%. And you'll recall, I emphasized it's a ridiculously short sample. Five days in practice, we would never use such a short sample. I just want to make it easy to illustrate the idea of volatility here. So we got 1.1%. It might surprise you that we're almost to value at risk. That's how simple it is. is. We've Now that we've got a volatility, we're just a short hop and a skip to value at risk. What do I mean? Well, what I mean is we're doing parametric value at risk. Volatility is the standard deviation and that's a parameter. And so let me get my, let me pull up here a plot of what we could call the normal bell curve or the normal distribution. This is a density uh, plot or a probability density function of the normal distribution. So I'm sure you've seen this before. And this is a normal distribution that reflects the two parameters that we've calculated from Google's data. And the th nice thing about the normal distribution is it only needs two parameters. That's how that's part of its elegance. That's part of its charm, and why we find it all over uh, the finance curriculum. Well, that's not the only reason. The the, other, the real key reason is the uh, central limit theorem. But I won't go into that. But the um, what I know about the Google data is it has an average of 0.71 percent. I'm sorry, negative 0.71%. So that puts the mean right here. That's where the curve peaks. And then the volatility or standard deviation is 1.1%. That is the so-called second moment or a measure of dispersion. And so this plot does reflect a standard deviation of 1.1%. So that's a measure of its dispersion. These two parameters, the average or mean, and the volatility or, or standard deviation, fully describe this normal distribution. So that's a double-edged sword, though, because on the one hand, consider how elegant that is. I only need those two pieces of data to make my distributional assumption. The other side of the coin on that is, well, I've made a simplification that I know right out of the box is not realistic about the returns. Now, what is VAR? Well, for percentage VAR, it's very simple. Value at risk is the worst expected loss 
over some selected time period with some selected confidence. And so it turns out to be, if we're talking in percentage terms, very simple. It's simply our critical Z multiplied by the standard deviation. Because the critical Z is a multiplier that scales the standard deviation to reflect the confidence that we have chosen. And that's a user decision. And so the two most common are a 95% VAR. We could also call that a 5%. So because we could say 95% confidence is the same as 5% significance. And the other more common one is a 99% confidence VAR. And so if I just look at the 90, let me just take the 95% VAR. All that says is it is the standard deviation of the returns multiplied by the critical Z that reflects a 95% confidence. And so to show you that, what I mean by that graphically, oh, I'm going to tuck it here in the corner. What we mean by that graphically is that if we say 95% VAR, we want, if this is the distribution that reflects our assumption about the distribution of returns, we want to identify the point here on the curve such that 95% of the area is to the right and 5% is to the left because that means if we get that point right, that means that in only 5% of the cases would our losses be exceed that level. So that's what a VAR is. If we say 99%, we're saying 99% of the time, the losses are going to be over here to the right, and only 1% will the losses exceed that number. So note an important shortcoming. It doesn't say anything about the magnitude of those extreme losses beyond the VAR. VAR says nothing about losses in excess of VAR. So that's what we want. And, if, and if, because we know the properties of the normal distribution, it's very easy to say, well, 95% falls exactly 1.645 standard deviations to the left of mean. And 99% falls 2.33 standard deviations to left of mean. So if I go back here in Excel, that would be a norm S in function. And I could say 5%. That gives me the critical value that corresponds to 5% or 95%. And then I simply multiply the volatility by that critical value that corresponds to 95% confidence. And I'll put that into percentage terms. And I get my 95% VAR is negative 1.8%. So to say that again, if the volatility or standard deviation is 1.1%, then I have 95% confidence that my worst loss won't exceed negative 1.8%, which is 1.1% multiplied by my critical values. So that's why I like to say that VAR, this parametric VAR, is nothing but the standard deviation scaled. And that scaling is just a function of the two decisions we make. What's the time period and what's the confidence? I didn't do anything with time period here because I'm talking about daily in all respects. This is a 95% daily VAR, but I did select the 95% confidence. If I wanted to make it a 99% confidence, I would make a 1% here. And then my 99% confidence VAR becomes negative 2.55%. And really, that introduces the basic flavor of parametric or delta normal value at risk. So I hope this was helpful.